Now then, now then, now then, now then. Konban wa minasan. Yoroshiku. Watashi no ichiban suborashi no tomodachi desu. All my best friends in the studio with me. Ah,、oh, what could be better? I caught a bit of your chat while、uh, while I was moving sliders and pressing buttons and things. And、uh, I see you're all ready for a lovely chilled out evening. So I thought I'd start with some、uh, Motorhead. <laughs> One day I'll trick you and do that. No, I won't. But you're okay.、Eh? No, I actually do want to start in a very chilled mode with、um, a piece called Kyorai on the Shakuhachi.、Uh, translates, most people translate it as an empty bell. Many, many legends attached to its origins. It's a traditional Buddhist Hongkyoko piece. Many many centuries old, but there are different translations. And the sensei that I learnt it from, he translated it as、um, imitating the bell, imitating the sound of the bell. In other words,、and, uh, he says that it expresses the depth and quietude of the soul, and should be played with humility in a natural way. I try to play with humility all the time, but don't always succeed. And he says we should seek for a beginner's sound, you know, a naive, simple sound, nothing fancy. Each note should die away like the dong of a bell. Dong. <laughs> anyway, I'll do my best. So it is one of the oldest of the Hongkyoko repertoire. It's considered one of the three classics. Let me tell you,、mm. and、uh, there was synchronicity happening today in the grounds of Heonji Zen Den, because I'd already planned that I wanted to play the empty bell for you guys. And Sally and June were digging away, just down there on the border. And what did June dig up but an ancient bell, a brass or bronze? Bell with, with no clapper. Spooky. I'm shivering thinking about it now. I love things like that. Some people get unnerved by that kind of things, don't they? I don't think you guys will. Anyway. So, with, <laughs> without further ado, where is it?、Uh, Kyore.
Fiore. Empty bell, or the imitation of the bell sound. Depending which translation you go with. <clears throat> All these old pieces have legends and stories and uh, the guy who was teaching us, who was already quite elderly, well, he's even older than me. <laughs> he was saying that when he was a young man, he loved this piece and uh, <clears throat> I think he and a friend went to the, the temple where it was said to have, have been written. And uh, it was late at night and they played this piece on their shakohachis. <laughs> and he said the, uh, the chief priest came running out and shooed them off. You know, even with gentle Hong Kyoko pieces, still there can be uh, some uh, argy bargy. <laughs> that is funny. Cute story. Oh, I watched uh, Amazing Grace last night. The, the uh, Arita film is like half, it's more like a documentary, I suppose, on the recording of uh, a gospel album. I think it's 1970. <coughs> That's how terrible I am. Me and Sally have been wanting to watch that for about two years. Finally got around to it. Better late than never, I guess. The Queen of Soul, Queen of Gospel. Oh, I just can't get over how good she is. How great she was. I mean, you know, genius, the word is used a lot, isn't it? Like uh, Michelangelo, he was a decent painter, and Beethoven and Mozart, and then they could knock out a tune and Tiger Woods is quite useful with a golf club, but Arita. <laughs> Unbelievable. So great. So sing with me, if you will. I know you will. We'll do You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. With We'll do it with John Ellis and Errol Roberts, and Stevie Williams, and Marky Creswell. And we'll give it our all for Aretha. Yeah. So I remember Helen, Grace, and Roy over in Harrogate requested this, amongst other folks. You have great taste, you Harrogate people. That's a bit part of my upbringing in Harrogate.
It's uh, Carol King, uh, the Wexler bloke, and the Goffin fella who wrote it. But <laughs> Arita made it her own. <clears throat> I think we could agree. Oh. <clears throat> now, Martin has been very patient, but for uh, three weeks he's been requesting. A Million Love Songs, or as he prefers to call it, the Gary Barlow song. So, thanks for waiting, mate. <coughs> I'm going to do it now. Throat allowing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's good stuff, water in it. And, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, that Jen requested this as well, and I think that cat Millie and uh, Sue and David. I think I think they fancy this one as well. Now I don't think I've ever sung this for you. I think Chris Bannister once did, maybe. Hmm. I think the only time I ever sang it was Lynn Croft's. Zoom birthday party. <coughs> anyway, so we can call it a, a world premiere. 
Sing along time again. <laughs> right, what do I need? I need both these microphones to work. There you go, Martin. There you go, Stevie. There you go, Jen. There you go, Millie the Cat. There you go, David and Sue. And well, I didn't want to hear that news just before I attempted to warble my way through that, that the absolute governor is listening in. <laughs> Chris, what can I say? Sorry. <laughs> if I'd known you were there, mate, <clears throat> you could have sunk it down the phone. 
Yeah, definitely great memories. We say it r- right here. We did it, didn't we? Right here in the den. Oh, we'll soon be back at it, mate. We soon will be. We're so keen to get in that field again that me and Sally bought a new tent, gazebo thing, but th- a heavy duty one this time because the elements cannot be accounted for. And we all like to keep going, but we've got to keep the kit dry. <laughs> Doesn't matter about us, Chris, does it? It's got to keep that kit dry because otherwise it sparks and suddenly we go, we go quiet. But, uh, it's a, oh, it's a heavy old thing, this new gazebo. But we mean business. <laughs> we definitely do. Yeah, it made it seem kind of real when the gazebo arrived. Me and Sal put it up in the garden to make sure all the bits were there. (sighs) You know when you just start randomly singing a song or a song starts going around your head? I have this tune, Nature Boy, going around my head, so I'm going to play it for you. I guess it's another world premiere. I've never played this in my life. I don't know why I started singing it. And uh, So I looked for a version, as one does, and uh, Nat King Cole came up. And he had a huge hit with it in... Uh, <clears throat> Oh, you know the one I'm going on about. Uh, there was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. Anyway, I'll play it on the set. Um, 1948, it was number one for um, eight weeks, apparently. But then I started researching it a little bit, and it was written by, it was really interesting, It's written by a bloke called Eden Abe or Arbez, I don't know how you pronounce it. <clears throat> and it's kind of at least semi-autobiographical, Nature nature Boy, which is why I put the words up. So you can look at the words while I play. <laughs> and uh, what an interesting guy. He lived a bucolic life. I had to look that up. It means sort of rustic and being like a shepherd or a tending the cattle. But he lived in flipping Hollywood, so apparently he camped out under the L of the Hollywood sign. <laughs> I wonder if this is true. And uh, he was obviously like a very early hippie. This is in the 1940s. So he's camping out, studying Oriental mysticism, sleeping outdoors with his family. And he wore long robes and sandals. That's all he wore. And uh, lived on uh, vegetables, fruit and nuts. Claimed to live on $3 a week. Now I think that he would have liked my porridge. And Chris Bannister likes my porridge as well. He's got his own version. <laughs> but I thought that was really interesting. So anyway, I'll play it. <laughs> Give me an anticlimax now. So I'll have a noodle and then go into the tune and you can follow the <laughs> words and drown me out. Thank you. 
It's a beautiful melody, isn't it? So, I don't know. For two or three days, it was going on my head, so <clears throat> I kind of learnt it ish. <laughs> what should we do next? Or oh, I can take those words away now. Oh, we might go on tour later. On tour with Snakey. That seems to have been going down well. Oh, Nat King Cole, what a voice, eh? Nearly as good as Chris Bannister. It's like velvet in it. Smooth and rich. It, rem <laughs> it reminded me, I haven't told this story for a while, it reminded me of a gig that I did in Hull Truck Theatre. Let's hope we'll be back there soon. We're just about to reschedule the, the date I was, did have there. Great venue. Uh, after this particular show, Sally and I were at the merchandise desk, as is our want, and uh, she's selling, I'm signing. And the uh, young lass came up, bought a CD, asked me to sign it. She told me how much she'd enjoyed the show, and she muttered the immortal words, I love your voice, it's like chocolate. <laughs> and Sally heard it, heard us, she shot me this look. <sighs> Luckily, we have a great relationship, don't we? We did do it before then. Oh, yeah. It's like chocolate. I could do some chocolate now. Well, I've got my thing on. That Sally made to keep the stop the reed corrugating. And uh Mike Cole's come up with a name for it. Well a few of you came up with some there's some great names kicking about. Seeing as Sally made it, and she's called Sally Hair, H-A-R-E, it's called the Hair Conditioner. <laughs> We're going to make millions out of that, Sally. Well, you are. You made it. Now, I've got this on for a reason, baby sax. Yeah, I know. Helen Watson is going to join us. She's lurking with intent on the hard drive. Snakey, full moon tonight. Remember this one? No moon at all, what a night. Even light and both of dim light. Stars have disappeared from sight. Thank you. 
Wonderful, wondrous Helen Watson. HelenWatson.net, Daphne's Flight. They'll be back out on the road soon, as will we all. Will we? Yeah, we will. Let's be positive. Let's be optimistic. Yeah, can't wait. It's lucky we've had the den. Though. What else will we have done? We've been knackered. Bit of penny whistle, tin whistle. I don't know, because Liz and Ron are not here, are they? It's one of their favourites. Oh, I don't know, maybe I should miss this out. Yeah, I'm going to miss it out and do it when Liz and Ron are back. Oh, I've teased you now. I'll do something on the whistle, but I won't do the one that I know is their favourite one then. And then... Then I haven't wound you up unnecessarily. I try to keep everybody happy, you see. <laughs> What's the phrase? You can't please all the people all the time. Such a simple instrument, the tin whistle. I mean, it's about as basic as you can get, just a stick of tin, tube of tin with a few holes in and the mouthpiece is nothing. It doesn't have a fancy embouchure like a reed or a flute where you have to blow over the top. You just go, same as a recorder, you know, but it can still go wrong. And uh, when it goes wrong, it's usually, I don't know why I started telling you this. See, see there's a little sort of, hang on, if I do that, get, get focus. There's a little kind of, um, I don't think you can see it. It's just a little slit there where you're blowing, but if, let's call it condensation. <laughs> can sort of get in there and make it go all squeaky and bubbly. And then if you're in mid-flight, the only thing you can do is stop blowing and have a quick suck, and then it clears it sometimes. You really did not need to know that, did you? The other thing you can do is periodically stick a bit of um, like a parcel tape, that thick stuff that probably used, probably loads of it round our gazebo when it arrived. You can stick a bit down there and that sort of clears it out. Oh, they are watching. All right, I'll go back to plan A then. You're being very quiet, Liz and Ron, but I know this is one of your absolute favourites. So, um, oh well, rewind. I was desperately trying to think how Women of Ireland went. I was going to do that. Right, Jim Diamond. This one does feature Jim Diamond on guitar, Birchie on production, and a gentleman by the name of Peter Whitaker playing beautiful strings, wonderful arrangement and great playing. And so it's a tune of Jim's called The Road to Florida Gary. Florida Gary is a small little village or inlet or little bay on the Isle of Skye. I don't know, I've never been there. But um, I bet Celia has.
The Road to Florida, Gary. By Jim Diamond from an album of his called Sugar Holly Days. We used to do that one live. There's a there's another boy band duo, myself and Jim, toured toured just the two of us for many years. And uh, he heard me strike up on the whistle on that one. He said, I should just play the tune on the whistle. So I did. Now it's not duct tape, it's not it's like a stiff thing. I've got to find it now, I'll show you. I'll keep a I'll keep a bit in my little sats case all the time. Because it's bugging me now. We need to know what it's called. Look, it's that stiff stuff that comes you know when you buy like a big pack of stone or something. And uh, you stick it down there. I might I might as well give it a little do now. Down the end it goes. Oh yeah, it needed that. A bit more. So what is that called, that stuff? It's very stiff. <laughs> it's definitely not duct... Well, I don't know what it is. I should have done that before I played the tune. It would have been better. <laughs> I did talk some rubbish, I know. Snakey, shut up and play. We'll have one more and then we'll go on tour. <laughs> you're, t you're trying to find a name for it. Maybe it hasn't got a name. Oh, somebody requesting the Sex Pistols. A great old soul tune. Maybe slightly out of character for a Sunday night, but you know, you might want to get up and have a, a little dance around the kitchen to this one. Jackie Wilson, I think.
the sweetest feeling indeed. That's what you guys give me down the Zen Den every Friday and every Sunday. A very sweet feeling. So she have a little, uh, you want to come on the road with me? We're going to go to Kyoto. And uh, let me get the photos lined up. Oh, it's complicated. Right. How do I do this? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Okay. I got it, I got it. I'm on it. Joe. I'm on it. Okay. So, uh, so last week I was telling you about one of my, well, about my first trips to Japan. And I'd always longed to visit Kyoto, the ancient capital. You know, it was so famous with all the old temples and the gardens and everything. Um, but, you know, life on the road so often allows hardly any downtime whatsoever. There's, there's, there's loads of places and even countries I've been to, but not even seen them, you know. And for that reason, it was not until my fourth trip out to Japan in 2006 that I finally got a chance to visit Kyoto. Was, uh, the boss man, um, oh, you don't want my fonts up there, do you? Um, my boss out there, Mr. Yozawa, his tours were a lot lot longer than the uh, Western artists. And we did have the occasional whole day off, although it was uh, only one day a month in those early days. So, and on that tour in uh, 2006, we had a half day off in Kyoto. We'd spent the night there. We never played there because there's not a concert hall big enough for him in Kyoto. But for some reason, we used a hotel there. So we had this half day. And I thought, oh, amazing, right? I'm finally here. I've got to grab some culture. And uh, I thought, well, I'm going to visit one of these f famous Japanese gardens I've heard all about and you know that was long before the internet so um, I probably got a tourist brochure of some kind a leaflet and I just picked out at random a Zen garden called Roanji it kind of jumped out at me a bit at the time I didn't realize that I had picked not only one of the but probably the most famous Zen garden in in the entire world and it really I changed my life really. Um, I was just so impressed and so moved, and uh, it was autumn as well as you can see. And uh, it's it's famous, most famous for its kare sansui. It means dry rock garden, and we'll get to that bit in just a second. Um, so this is the oh, there we go. So, you'll see it. Quite small, really, this, this section. And just raked sand. And beautiful stones with a bit of moss around them. And uh, that style of gardening would then become a part of my life. Not until quite a few years later. And... Uh, Rock gardens are sometimes described as gardens for the mind, you know, like meditation gardens. We contemplate that emptiness in our search for, I don't know, search for what? Enlightenment? That may never come, but certainly peace, calm and stillness. They are to be had in the Japanese gardens. So that's Ryanji. And I just picked a few more photos that I've taken on subsequent trips all in Kyoto temples I can't remember the name of this one but this is another one of my favourites anyway I could take you there but I don't know what it's called <laughs> the same temple complex simple but beautiful eh? well yeah, you won't all agree probably you go where's the flowers <laughs> nah I think you'll get it. That's my favourite kind of moss. Star moss, it's called. It's got a posh name as well. It's one of the central temple buildings on that. That's like a site with the 
a big main temple and lots of sub temples. We couldn't not have a, a bendy pine tree, could we? But yeah, there's a lot of emptiness to survey in there. Oh, another bendy pine tree. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. But I just want to be there, that's the problem. Okay, that's it. Let you off now for good behaviour. <laughs> On tour with Snakey. Where will we go next week? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Snake Davis dot rocks. <laughs> like it. So, time for one more. I'm really hoping Chris is not with us anymore because then um, this is one that he could have sung properly if he'd been here. But there have been a lot of requests for this and I promised to do it. And I promised a number of people, but the only, the only one I can remember right now because I'd got them written down somewhere but I lost it, is Mr. Val Schultz. He also played on the uh, Hallelujah piece, as did James from Olverstern. We checked in with him today and I found out that he's got the same model of Yanagasawa alto sax as me. A 992. Beautiful instrument. Uh, this one's a bit bit of a sort of sax, British sax classic. A lot of people quote it. It's the piece that was played by a gentleman called Wesley McGugan with, what's her name? Hazel O'Connor. A much requested piece, which has never appeared on the stream before. da 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 <laughs> Partly because I've had no one to sing it. <clears throat> and some bits where the. Never mind. I'll do my best. <laughs> Go for it, says Martin. I'm going to make this. It's all I can do. Started off playing the whistle and ended up playing the tenor sax. Where did you go wrong? Yeah. That's a good combo. I discovered the whistle, you know, halfway through my sax playing career. So I did it the other way around, mate. But I love my little whistles and bigger ones. Okay. I'm pretending to check my read like that's going to help me. Come on, snaky boy. You can give it a good shot. And then I'll say goodbye before we go. Right, Jim Diamond. I find all, all kinds of excuses not to start this song. <coughs> we should all go for a Zen Den trip down to um, Kyoto. I'll be your tour guide. It's a great place. I highly recommend it.
I definitely need to lie down after that. And <laughs> Chris was still there, <laughs> being nice to me. Oh, mate, sorry about that. So there you go, Val, and all Will You fans, and I know there are a lot of you out there, that featured on uh, our Classic Sax Solos 2 album, along with lots of other saxy classics, of course. Guys, I've so enjoyed your company. Liz and Ron, I'm glad you were there. And you got your floor to Gary. Chris, great to see you, mate. Can't wait to see you and feel you in the flesh and be back out doing it. And uh, you're all wonderful. You're all going to, if not heaven, then Kyoto, which is very close, second. 
No. I'll see you all in heaven. You good people. And then up popped Danny Walker. Synchronicity. You can help us get there. So good to see you. See you Friday. See you Sunday. Spread the word, guys, if you possibly can. I need to swell these audiences and get more brethren on board. <laughs> so, you all take good care. Be kind to each other. As I know you will be. Be kind to yourselves. Whatever that entails. It might involve chocolate. One of the themes of tonight. It might involve nice walks. Instead of being banged up in the house all the time. You might enjoy it. it. might involve a nice beer or glass of wine. And plenty of sleep. Exercise. <laughs> what am I going on about? Guys... I really, really enjoyed your company. It's great to see you. Martin, you got your song at last. Thanks for your patience. Oh, Yak was playing along too. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Thank you, Sal. Thank you, Helen Watson. That was beautiful. Thank you, Joseph. You technical, wonderful boy, you. And all the boys in the band, Birchie and John Ellis and Stevie and Errol and Mark Creswell. I'm so lucky for all these talented mates. You'll take care.